The key message of the book on power, I think there are really several messages. The first message is that people need to understand the game that they're in and they under need to understand organizational dynamics and how and why people succeed and how and why people often get their, uh, their careers derailed. And I don't think you're gonna find much of this in the traditional leadership literature, uh, which is very much in many instances how people want, to believe, want you to think that they behaved on their rise to the top are a scout-like list of characteristics that people are supposed to have, but really ignore, I think, the organizational realities and the trade-offs. I think the second reason why people ought to um, be atten pay attention to this book is because power leads to a number of good things. Number one, it can be monetized. Number two, it actually leads to longer life. People who are actually in control of their jobs and their situation live longer, uh, controlling for all kinds of physiological factors. Um, and number three, if you're really going to do, if you're going to make important social change, if you're going to really make a difference in the world, you need to understand how to build and exercise influence and mobilize that influence to get things done. What do I hope to accomplish? I hope, what I really hope to accomplish is that people will, um, will learn about uh, the sources of power, the uses of power, uh, how to become more powerful themselves, and they will then be less like victims as they face an organizational world which over the last decades has not been a very benign world. I mean, you know, eight and a half million people have lost their jobs. Uh, partners have been thrown out of venture capital firms. Partners have been thrown out of law firms. Partners have been thrown out of uh, uh, management accounting firms. And in each of these instances, I would hope uh, that people would learn how to hold on to power and to, and to have power in a way so that they never have to leave a job unless they want to. That's one of the objectives I set for my class, never having to leave a position uh, unless, it's on, unless it's on your choice. And so I would hope that people would learn about power dynamics in a way that would permit them to become more effective organizational survivors. I was inspired to write this book by the 30 years, or 30 plus years now, uh, that I've taught this course uh, to our MBA students, to our Sloan students, uh, to, and to executives literally all over the world. And what is really clear to me is that people really need this material, but it also makes them uncomfortable. And, uh, and so therefore, we needed to write it in a way um, that would really speak um, to the people, um, the intended audience. My earlier books on power dealt with people like Lyndon Johnson and Robert Moses and other famous politicians and CEOs. And this book, I think, really makes a big step forward uh, because it includes material not only on the famous, but also on uh, people who are really frontline employees, early in their career people from all over the world, from India, from Brazil, uh, from China, um, and, uh, and, and people who are just like I hope the readers are. So the readers should be able to read this book and say, yes, I can see myself doing this because the people doing these things are not that different from them. Boy, there are, you know, I think there are lots of stories uh, that are very, very powerful stories. Uh, one is a story, an email uh, sent to me by a former student who said, you know, I really remember the material that we learned, uh, and it's not that hard to act on. Uh, my boss was moved into another position, uh, so temporarily I didn't have a boss, and I used this as an opportunity to make connections with uh, the people higher up in the organization and build a network and build my visibility, and I think that really illustrates that this is not doing something grand like, you know, building the Triborough Bridge, but oftentimes it's a relatively small thing like seizing some initiative. I have another one of my favorite stories is Marcello, uh, a Brazilian uh, who uh, cultivated the press in Brazil, uh, really wrote stories for a lot of business magazines, uh, did a lot of things uh, to become known in the Brazilian press, and was put on the cover of the leading Brazilian magazine uh, as part of an article on the 10 up-and-coming CEOs of the future. 
And you know, once you're named as the CEO of the future, you're likely to be a CEO, which he is. And, and that I think really shows you the importance and the possibility of managing your reputation and building an image for yourself uh, that can help lead you uh, uh, to a much uh, more powerful and a good place. I think that, so I think this book has, I think, um, several differences uh, from my earlier books on power. First, as I've already alluded, it is a book which is filled with examples of people, both genders, and for that matter, gay people, um, and from a variety of different cultures in a way that I think the other books have not. So that I hope this book uh, speaks to people from a, in a variety of career stages and a variety of of cultures and, and, and cultural backgrounds, because we really have tried uh, to look at people in a variety of different settings. Um, and I think it is more practical in the sense that based upon my teaching and based upon what I see people using, it's, de it's designed to get people actually moving, as opposed to having power as some kind of theoretical exposition about this is what power is or could be. Uh, it certainly has, of course, a, a good measure of social science research and a good measure of social science theory that underlies it, but it's really about how do you use this stuff on a daily basis uh, to get power, to keep power, uh, to deal with co co competitors, uh, to overcome opposition and setbacks. So in that sense, I think it's, it's a very uh, practical, hands-on, uh, but still rigorously derived book. Well, the responses are, number one, it's different which it is. It is different than the typical leadership literature. I think the leadership books are, in many instances, works of fiction. Uh, they are stories about how CEOs would like the world to perceive them, uh, but they have very little to do with what the CEOs actually did. Uh, they are aspirational in the sense of that they are, I think they are good books about how many people believe the world should be, and I agree with that. If the world were like these many books that have been written, the world would definitely be a better place and people would be more humanely treated and there would be less workplace stress and less workplace disengagement and less workplace job satisfaction and fewer than the 60 or 70 percent of the people who now say the first thing they will do when the recession is over is go look for another job. But I do think that we need to keep in mind, pretty firmly in mind, the difference between what is normative and what is descriptive. So this is a descriptive book. Uh, and it is a book which, you know, as the Publishers Weekly Review said, it's a tough book. It's a tough book in the sense that it, that it speaks about uh, some of the strategies that actually work. And some of those strategies are a little hard, they're a little aggressive, they're a little competitive. And in a world in which, you know, people go to a swim meet and uh, there are seven competitors and seven people give ribbons, uh, you know, that may be fine for the swim meet. Uh, but as I look around, I see only one CEO and one managing partner of an accounting firm and one managing partner of a managing consulting firm. And so people, I think, really need uh, to be ready for the competitive world uh, that they will face. So I get some comments that say this is a book refreshingly truthful. And uh, some people like the truth. And then in the words of Jack Nicholson in his famous line from A Few Good Men, some people don't want the truth. So that's what I... <laughs> I've gotten both reactions. Well, if I, once the publicity is over, I'm going to go back to working on my other research interests, which, are, which is much more about economic evaluation and the economic evaluation of time and money and how uh, thinking about uh, economic evaluation changes the decisions that we make. Very abstract and theoretical, which is kind of me.